Hey guys, this is Dave Bennett from Mochi-Crew.com, and I want to go over the Mochi Pro 2.8 updates. There are three major updates, and the first one is that you can encrypt the password or not. If you encrypt the password, um, then everything operates status quo. It's the way it's always been. But the encryption of the password is the one thing that kept profiles from being completely editable and by that I mean this uh, if you go and take a look at a profile say and if it's encrypted and you open it with notepad then then uh, you couldn't make copies of it but if you turn the encryption off encrypt the password off uh, then you can make copies of it and by that I mean when we created the HB okay then you can use the profile creator to create variations on the profile because encryption is turned off. Why would you want it on? If you're working with a partner and you got to send them a copy of your project, you want them to be able to upload stuff to your website, but you don't want them to be able to log in or delete anything, uh, then you would encrypt the password. That way he cannot possibly read the password and he cannot see what the password is and so he can't log in your site. OK, he can't do anything. Uh, but if you're just running it for yourself or you're doing work for clients who, you know, it's their website, it's their password. It's for them anyway. Uh, if you turn encryption off, then you can make variations from the outside of the profiles. And I'll go over this in a separate video, uh, but it makes it really, really easy to get the profile right. And it makes it very hard to screw up the FTP paths. It's something, all, you know, people have always had problems with is FTP paths and getting them right. Uh, but now we can just guide people really well with that profile creator. Now they can make several profiles, even for add-on domains or subdomains or subdomains on add-on domains if you set up the file appropriately in the first place for those who know how. Uh, and that'll come on in a later video. Uh, then you can actually... Um, make as many copies as you want so that's the first one the second one the second update is that when the runs are produced they used to be date timestamp folders so you had to use moji pro to upload them or if you wanted to upload them yourself you had to rename the folders to the right project names each time around which was kind of a pain you had to go into each folder you had to look at a page and you had to see what the project name was you got to hover over a link and look down here in the corner to see the domain slash and then whatever the project is ah moji dash review i get it and so then you would be able to rename uh that folder to moji dash review and same with every other folder you created now we're auto creating 10 at a time so we decided to just have them be the right project folder names in the first place that way you can do something like zip them all up and upload them or, or just upload them or whatever you want to do or if you need to send them to a client and let him put them on his own website you know you can actually just zip the whole thing rename it to whatever you want you can you know upload it and let a client download it and put on his own website just tell him extract it in his root or unzip it and upload to your root uh, and they're already done so it's just a time saver it's a really nice time saver um, the last one was actually a fix in a way and a very cool one and that is this let's say I was going to uh, run something out let me, let me just choose something okay and let's say this, let's say I wanted to run this thing. <clears throat> okay. And let's say I was going to run it just locally anyway. So let me just go and open it. Now, let's say I wanted to run it. Now it's going to hit the next button, but let's say I made the mistake of accidentally having the CSV file open. That's the CSV file it's using. Let's say I accidentally had it open. I forgot about it. I was making changes, added an image, changed an image, something, and I minimized it. And then I was doing other stuff. And then I went to run it, and I completely forgot it's open. <laughs> see, it is open. And since it's open, CSV files can only be used by one process at a time. So if I have it open, Moji Pro cannot use it. It's me or Moji Pro can use the thing. You know, I have to close it first, but I have it open. So... In the old days, if you accidentally had it open and forgot and you hit the next button, you lost that URL breakdown that shows up on the next pane. Now when you hit the next button, it warns you. It says, hey, the thing either does not exist or it's currently open. Please ensure that it exists and also ensure that it's not open. And you're like, huh? And you hit it again. And it tells you the same thing. And then you think, well, what the heck? And then you find it and you realize, oh, it's open. I see. And you close it. 
Okay, then you hit next and everything's kosher. And that's what I mean. In the old days, this whole thing would either disappear right away or it would still, you could still see it, but if you hit process, it would give you a huge error. And you think, what the heck? And you come back around, maybe you refresh virus, and the whole thing vanishes. It's all gray. There's nothing here. You have to rebuild from cash. Okay? And that's a pain in the neck. And you think, well, how do I do it? How do I build this up? I don't know how it works. And so then what do you have to do? Go into troubleshooting, right? And look at the picture. <laughs> and then you have to rebuild exactly what you see here uh, and fill it out just the way you see it there. Okay, and that was always a pain in the neck, right? So people would have to kind of learn that that could happen and that if they left the CSV file open, they rued the having done it later because they'd have to rebuild it. And then they get really careful about not leaving it open. And once in a while, we'd still forget. But now it doesn't happen anymore. Now if you have it open, all right, this thing will not allow you to continue until you fix the problem, right? And so again, if I have it open, okay, and I go to hit next, it'll let me know. And so I will not lose that URL breakdown. That's just one headache less. Now for guys who are saying, okay, well, how can I tell about that when I'm not, when I don't actually have this open? What if you're just gonna run it, okay? And say you were going to just hit your step three hit me or whatever, and same with the HB, right? The, the uh, Moji HB, HB, whatever one. And I hit this thing. Sometimes the command prompt windows will pop open and then just shut again right away. And you'll think, well, why did that happen? I mean, they're supposed to run out the pages. How come they shut the same second almost and they didn't do anything? And you think, why did that happen? Remember, there's two ways to check it. One is to go and actually open a related profile. It might be the one in here. Or in the case of the automation like this, it's producing the versions of the profiles in that Moji auto run folder, right? So you'd open one of these things, literally. You go in your, you know, load it up, go in your uh, auto run folder, wherever that thing is again, Moji auto run. I got so much stuff, <laughs> so many versions. Ah, here it is. And then you go in your profiles and you open one. If you're on 32 bit, you got to go in here to find yours if you're on 32 bit. But you open one, and when you go to run it, then you get the error message that pops up. You know, that's, that's one way to see it, is just open a local version so you can see what kind of a message you get, right? The other way is what? In, in case you didn't know, hit start and hit documents. Okay, go into your documents. And when you do, we have something called Moji Pro Logs. For those who didn't know about it, if you go in there, it gives you text files for all your runs. You know, every time it does a new run, even those 10 auto-generated one, that's that's 10 of these then, all right? But it, act, it, it uploads all these things and it tells you what's going on in the logs. So if you open a log, okay, it tells you what it did and it goes all the way down, you know, and it tells you at the bottom whether it was successful or not. And if there is an error message, It'll be, you know, the last thing on the file, okay? These shorter ones, you might say, well, these are bigger, but that one's smaller. How come that one's so small? It's because it's doing something else. FTP uploader on the side, it's just a further step. It still did everything successfully, okay? You can tell because it's what it's saying down here, all right? But if you had an error, it would just give you the error message saying, hey, couldn't run CSV file, either does not exist or it's open. Please close it and try again. And then you get to say, oh, that's right. Now, by the way, once in a while from the Moji Pro logs, it's good to just clear them all out, okay? Delete. You know, that way you just free up some room in your computer. When you know you're done with them and they're all successful, everything's kosher, go ahead and clear out those logs every once in a while, right? So there you go. That's the three things about the Moji Pro 2.8 update. Again, uh, allowing the encrypt of the password, and if you want to make versions with the profile creator, we're calling it, then do not encrypt. That way we can make copies very easily from the outside. And that just minimizes the chance that somebody gets the FTP pass wrong or mistypes something. It's just so much easier. And then the second update was what? It was the runs are now produced with the right names for the projects. They can go right near root and they're all going to be correct and connect properly. No renaming necessary. Uh, and then finally, if you had the CSV file open, it'll warn you. 
and it, you will not lose that URL breakdown. So that's just one big headache gone. All right. Hope you enjoy the 2.8 update.